What's up, Strictly Fishers here. I want to give you guys a behind the scenes take of my tank that I often post about. I do want to say I have much respect for you YouTubers out there who are filming and doing the post-production work. It's much more difficult than I anticipated, but I will figure it out soon. So let's get into it. This is the ProStar 150 made by ProClear Aquatics. It comes in black and white. It has a metal stand that's already built when you get it. There's also a built-in sump and it's pretty easy to set up. You have your return line and then your two drain lines. Make sure you take the gaskets, the rubber gaskets that they have hanging from the top, put them in these so there's no leaks. The sump is, has multiple chambers. Here I have an Eheim heater. There are three filter socks. I change the filter socks as necessary, but because I use filter floss in there, I'm not having to change them as often. I just change the filter floss I will you know, clean out the, the filter socks as necessary or replace them. Here I have my biological and chemical media. I usually have the, like the rings and then you know, maybe some other, I have the, I can't think of the name of the fluval substrate, but I have that in here, or the Seachem substrate, but I have that in here as well. I also have the Chemi Pure Blue and Purigen and probably some activated carbon as well. There's a little hole at the top of, of the, the cover, and that is for, you know, if you run a saltwater tank and you want to put a protein skimmer in there, it's already, you know, done for you, and then everything fits around it perfectly. I had a UV light in here, but I broke the quartz sleeve and the bulb when I first got it. I replaced it, I put it back in, and then the UV light burned out within a couple of days, so I'll get it fixed one day. There's my return pump right there. And it has this built-in surge protector extension cord thing. I have all my gadgets plugged in. Yes, I do label them. It makes it a lot easier for when you're you know, doing maintenance to your tank or you wanna change things up. I also have plenty of room to put my supplies. I have the food, I have extra filter socks and whatnot. And I put all my water treatment stuff that I use all the time when I do water changes. And uh, it's really nicely built. It's solid, sturdy, it's metal. It has this nice material on the outside. Again, it's offered in black and white. And when I looked at tanks, I looked at the Red Seas as well, but I found this one to be much nicer. I like the material better. I like how it was built. This is actually assembled with the Red Sea. You have to assemble the stand yourself. Tank is very thick, it's very high quality glass. I believe it's 48 inches in width, 24 inches in depth, and probably 60 inches in height. So I have these controllers down here. Let me just show you what they are. So this is a controller for the wave maker. It's called like a Unic Life or something like that. It's a W40 model. It's the most powerful one they make. It's extremely powerful. You can see I have it on the lowest settings. There's different types of waves you can make through it. And I just, I keep it on like the basic setting. There's a controller for the return pump and there's a controller for the gyres. I did have a second gyre hooked up, which I put away. I'll tell you why in a second, but these, you know, these run all the time. And let me just show you why I took off one of the gyres. So I have one there and you can move them around. There's magnetic backs to it to hold it up. And the reason why I took it down, I took the other one out is because I replaced it with the wave maker. I wanted something more powerful this thing sucks everything out from the substrate blows it around so it's not staying in the substrate and you hope it makes it through the overflow right there um it does you do need to make sure that you position it right so it's not pulling up all your substrate all, you know and, and pushing it around and making gaps in the substrate and you want to make sure that it's not blowing water through your lid and i'll show you the lid in a second but I do have the other gyre there. I need to reposition it a little bit better. I recently redid the hardscape in here. I moved some pieces around and made more openings for these guys to go in and out of. And you can see the lid here. And you know, one of the, the issues I had with this wave maker was it was blowing a lot of water up and over it. And you know, I don't want to ruin this thing because it's relatively new. So, you know, just a little trial and error, and then you and you get it. This is actually a lid made by Clearview Lids. I had to custom order it based on my tank specifications. They don't come with lids, which is, for me, I thought it was odd, but I guess that's just, a lot of people who run saltwater tanks, they don't put lids on there. But 
to each his own. So I have this feed door, I have these little grooves in the back to put the wires, and then I have this light. It's a fluval plant light. I think it's 2.0 or 3.0, and it works really well. I like you know how you can customize it, and you can, I, I have it in sync with my other tanks, which is pretty neat to do. This is, I was told this was Dragonstone, but I don't think it is. It's really nice. It could be some volcanic rock. I have no idea. I have 100 pounds of carob seed African cichlid substrate in here. And I have these fake plants made by Fluval. My mother-in-law was saying, or she was asking why I didn't have any plants in there. So I went out and got these. I think it looks nice. And, you know, I do move them around every now and then. Let me show you a little bit more on the fish. So this is a red empress OB. That's a red empress right there. That's a dragon blood OB. I have some super reds that are right there. I also have this blue dragon blood and there's another one right there that's a little younger. I have the venusis with the giraffe cichlid in there. I have a bunch of random OBs like strawberry ones. Um, there are two Z rock or Zimbabwe rocks. There's a lemon Jake right there, one of my favorites. That and the Red Empress are some of my favorites. There's a Canary Yellow OB, another Dragon Blood. There's an Electric Blue Ollie right there. There's an OB Friari right there, and I think they're the same fish. This this one's OB. There's a Clown Loach back there. Probably gonna add some more soon. There is also a large Plecko who likes to hide underneath that rock there. I have a short fin albino pleco who's currently in this cave but he usually hangs out in that cave so i do recommend this tank i think it's aesthetically pleasing but it's also functions really well once you get you know know all the little ins and outs of it there's ways to modify the sump to make it uh, operate better which i've done and if you have any questions you know about the tank or African cichlids you can always hit me up you can comment below or you can message me on Instagram if you really want to know about African cichlids though I highly suggest you check out caveman aquatics and that's caveman with a K that's my buddy Kev he is the guru on African cichlids he's so knowledgeable he's like a teacher but a fun teacher and so he's taught me a lot he's helped me you know improve my my fish keeping skills and you should definitely check them out if you want to learn more about the African cichlids and how to properly run a tank of African cichlids. So that's about it for now. I thank you for watching and I appreciate your support. And until next time, have a good one.